It's time once again for... Mark Webb, Knowledge Investigator. Mr. Webb, we just learned in Humanities class that Copernicus figured out the sun is in the center of the solar system. But how did he discover this? He did his work in the 16th century. There were no space probes to explore and photograph the solar system. Interesting question. I'll see what I can find out for you. Journey through all of human knowledge and see how it's all related as you follow the adventures of the man with the action-packed brain case, America's fabulous freelance knowledge investigator, yours intellectually, Mark Webb. In the first half of the 20th century, someone asked philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein if he thought earlier generations were foolish for thinking the sun went around the earth. Wittgenstein replied by asking how it would have looked if the sun actually did move around the earth. Wittgenstein's point was that it would look exactly the same way it looks now. Let me demonstrate. In this scene, can you be absolutely certain that the camera is spinning and not the rest of the world spinning around the camera? And no matter how high I climb, I can't feel the earth rotating. So the ancients, quite reasonably, placed the Earth at the center of the universe and thought everything in the heavens revolved around it. This model did face some difficulties, though. People observed that from night to night, the planets would move from west to east across the sky. Every night they were a little bit farther to the east. But every once in a while, a planet like Mars especially, but even Jupiter and Saturn, would slow down over the course of the next few days till they were hardly moving. Then they would move backwards for a while. And after a few days, they would reverse again and start to move forward. And then keep moving forward day by day. Mercury and Venus were even stranger. In the east, at sunrise, or just before sunrise, or the west, just after sunset, for a few days, Mercury would get higher and higher. But it would only go so high, and then over days dip back towards the horizon. Venus would do the same thing over the course of a few weeks. Every night it would get further and further from the horizon. And then, instead of going in a full circle, would go right back towards the horizon. What was going on? In order to explain this strange retrograde motion with the Earth at the center of the universe, they thought, they imagined the moon went around the Earth and the other planets such as Mars went around the Earth, but this is a perfectly circular orbit. What would make Mars go backwards? Astronomers had to add other circles to these circles. So they imagined that instead of just going around straight, Mars was actually moving on another circle that circled its orbit. And for a while, they were able to approximate the motion of Mars, but they could never get it exactly right. I wasn't quite sure how Copernicus had figured this out, but in any event, the solution would have to wait for my dog sledding vacation.
As I've mentioned before, I love winter. That's interesting. Did you see that telephone pole appear to move in front of the hay bales? I was pretty sure it wasn't moving, but I was. Back home, I sat still for a while to think what this could mean. You know, the path of that walker is kind of like an orbit. Maybe I can catch up to her and figure something out. See how she appears to be moving right to left in front of the bleachers? In the sky, that would be west to east. I wonder if that's significant. And when I catch up to her and pass her, she appears to move left to right. In the sky, that would be east to west. It happened again the next time I lapped her. This had to be the solution. She and I were moving around a common point, and so were the Earth and Mars. Copernicus figured out that the backwards motion of Mars across the sky from time to time was actually an illusion. Let's see what happens when the Earth catches up to and passes Mars because it's closer to the Sun and orbiting faster. Here's a series of observations. We're looking forward at Mars. The next time, we're looking not so far forward at Mars. Here, we're exactly between Mars and the Sun. And look at what Mars is apparently doing now, moving backwards. So, as the Earth passes it, Mars as an illusion appears to move retrograde to the orbit, but then as the Earth continues around and Mars continues around, the orbit stabilizes. This is exactly what I observed when I watched the walker on the other side of the track and then I passed her. The new heliocentric theory explained planetary motions much more simply than the geocentric one. But what had first tipped off Copernicus that this might be the right answer? There's no way to be sure, so we'll have to use our historical imaginations. Perhaps, during his clerical studies, Copernicus took exercise by walking around a monastery courtyard. As he did so, he would have observed the people he passed appear to move backwards. Maybe there was even a fountain in the middle, and he realized both people were orbiting around a central point. In any case, something he saw made him look at the universe in a different way. I get it. Our knowledge begins with experience, but it doesn't end with experience. End of investigation. End of report. Remarks? It's a mistake to think that people in the past were smarter or better than people today. But many in the modern world have convinced themselves that they cannot do things alone. They've become dependent on science and the tools that science creates to tell them what to do and how to do it. But anyone alive today could have made the leap that Copernicus made. All it took was being in the right place at the right time and observing and thinking about all the information available to him. So don't be someone who just uses applications. Go out and solve problems and create new applications. Yours intellectually, Mark Webb.